Hey everybody! In today's video, I am going to do my very first cards with the Arteza Woodless Watercolor Pencils. I love these pencils almost as much as the stamps that I used with them today. These are new releases from Gina K, and they are fantastic! I'll have links to all this below the video. So here are the Arteza Woodless Watercolor Pencils. And what's cool about them is the entire pencil is made of pigment, which is very, very fun. So you actually get a really good bang for your buck with these, especially when you see how I'm going to use them. Because you're just getting a lot more product than you do in a pencil that has pigment that is then surrounded by wood. So I have to put these in rainbow order because I have a compulsion to do that, even though I'm not using all the colors. I felt the need to do that. And in my video on the Arteza markers, I showed you that they have a six pack of water brushes that I'm in love with because they come in all different shapes, which I have never experienced in a water brush before. This quarter inch flat is one of my favorites because I can do my swatches with it, which you're going to see in just a minute. And then there are several different sizes of the round brush, and I really like this small detailed one. So I have a piece of 5x7 Fabriano hot press watercolor paper here. Fabriano is my watercolor paper of choice. And I'm going to swatch these out for you. Now I am sitting in front of a window, and we had a series of really crazy bright days. <laughs> And so the pigments that you're going to see me put down on these swatches are much more saturated in real life. And you can kind of see it when clouds go by here. But you'll really see it best in my photograph at the beginning and end of the video. Now one thing about this selection of colors is the really nice range of skin tones that they have. You can create any skin tone imaginable with what is in this collection. And I do have a coupon code on my blog that will be good through April 10th, I believe, if you want to try these out. So head over to my blog and check out your discount code. And enjoy these as much as I do because wait till you see what I'm going to make with these. It's so much fun. Now this does have a full spectrum rainbow in addition to some really nice shadow colors, a black, a gray, an espresso color, and a good neutral tan, and then of course a white. So I put these swatches in order and then I labeled them all. And now I know kind of what to reach for when I'm stamping. And I just keep that handy. I actually have one little folder that I put all of my swatches in. So it has my hex chart from Sandy Allnock for Copic markers. It has my Daniel Smith swatches and all my pencils and any other mediums like my Hero Arts liquid watercolor, etc. And I just keep them all in this clear plastic folder and I reach for that whenever I sit down to make a project. I like to have the swatch chart next to me. So that I can sort of look up there at these yellows and I can say, okay, this adorable little Gina K lion, seriously, how cute is this lion, needs to be the following colors. And I can grab those. The color names are on these pencils and that makes it easy. Usually I store my pencils in a pencil case and I try to do it in rainbow order. But what usually happens to me is I grab a couple of colors and pull them out and then put them back in the wrong order. So the swatch is the most helpful, I find. Now I'm taking this tawny color, which really is perfect for my little tawny lion. And you'll notice that I'm using the smallest water brush and look at the fine detail I can get on his fur. I just love being able to get that kind of precision like I would get with one of my little number four, or number two paint brushes. That makes me happy. And picking up the pigment from 
the pencil itself like I do results in a much more intense pigment than if you colored and then drew that pigment out with the brush on the paper. And so this is almost always my preferred method of working with any watercolor pencil. Sometimes if you feel like you're sort of disappointed in the pigment in a watercolor pencil, I always tell my students that's why. It's because you're coloring on the paper and then blending that with water. If you go straight to the pigment, you'll get much better results and much more vibrant color. The only thing that you need to remember if you're going to pick the pigment up directly from the pencil is never ever sharpen a damp pencil because you will just make a mess and you won't get a, a good result. So let the pencil completely dry after a painting session before you sharpen it. You won't need to sharpen very much when you do this because you can paint for probably decades without sharpening one of these pencils if you're picking it up the way I am and not coloring with it. So this is my preferred method and I think you should give it a try because I enjoy painting like this a lot. Now you'll notice that my brush does not have any water in it. That's typically how I use water brushes. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. But I find that I have a lot more control and precision if I dip my water out of a container. And then I can, if I have excess water, I can get it off before I even pick up the pigment. It's better for me as a Virgo to be able to <laughs> control the amount of water on my brush. I get better blending that way. Now the black pencil, you'll see how intense this is. I am going to color his nose and I'm going to leave a little tiny spot white just to indicate that his nose is shiny. And then his eyes and mouth, I still have him set up on my Misty. So I will go back and stamp those details in at the end but I wanted to color his nose because it was a big enough shape that I felt like I could be accurate and not make it look weird. I also am shading with black, putting in true shadows, even with the yellow, just to make him look more three-dimensional. So to make his mane move to the back and his face move to the front, I will just edge his face with a little bit of black and a little bit of dark brown to bring that forward. Now the ink that I stamped him in initially is my favorite ink for No Line Watercolor. It is the Ink on 3 Fade Out ink. And I use this for all of my No Line Watercoloring now. It's just phenomenal. It's perfectly neutral and it just fades out over time and blends into whatever you're watercoloring or coloring with your alcohol markers. It is a magical, magical ink that I feel like I've been searching for my entire adult life. And now I've found it. So I'm very happy. Thank you to my friends at Ink on 3 for this amazing invention. I'm going to add some details, little warm colors here and there. And I'm going to actually just water down a little bit of that espresso color and use that to make the shadow underneath. The lion and I'm just doing that on the plastic from the stamp set which I do pretty frequently. You can usually not hurt a painting at all with a deep dark shadow so don't be afraid of those. I actually think the darker the shadow the more dramatic your overall composition will be and I do need to make the interior of his ears and the shadow behind his ears a little bit darker because they were looking kind of flat to me. So I'll just add a little bit of shadow and it brings the images forward so much. It's so much fun and so easy. So you can see I just used a handful of colors. I put some of the color from the lion into the shadow. And here is my chart of these Arteza pencils. Now I am part of a fun blog hop for the stunning Gina K release today. 
So head over to my blog for a chance to win some prizes and see some other beautiful samples, including my sweet little lion. Thanks so much for watching.